I'd rather golf in 120 degree heat Ooh. versus I haven't golfed a full 18 in at least a month. Didn't you go to Arizona? Oh, yes, 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 yes. I haven't golfed. Wait, eight. Him. Okay, okay. <laughs> you shot, that How was did your, I forget about that? I don't know. It was your best round ever. But I kept telling my wife, I said, I'm, I don't need to golf again for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. And I have lived up to that. Not purposely. I just have not. I haven't had the itch to get out. Because it's fucking freezing. I also have a kid who I can make laugh now, and that's really kind of cool. Yeah, it's cool. So I don't really want... I haven't been working out. I haven't been golfing. I just kind of want to just sit there and stare at mm -hmm. him, which is kind of sweet, actually. So priorities have been shifted, and it's also really cold out. And we also have a simulator, mm -hmm. but I also haven't played a full 18, like actual core i've been playing a lot of par three courses yeah. just par getting that three courses are really fun on there they're fun on the simulator you get that short game dialed in but I, my season's done yeah pretty much and i can look back and be like well i, I had a good season i i used a new set of clubs um i shot my personal best multiple times um and now it's come to a close i mean we'll maybe hopefully maybe still get out and shoot a video or two so we'll see what we can do but i wanted to touch real quick on um midwest golf as a whole mm -hmm. okay so when we sit here and kind of, you know, bitch and complain about like, God, the golf season is over. What are we going to do now? Well, we're going to go hunting. We're going to ice fish. Um, we're going to play on the simulator all winter. Yeah, that's all. That's, it, that's cool. I think what makes what makes the Midwest the best type of golf there is, is that it's seasonal. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it being seasonal is that you only have a certain amount of time to really get into it, yep. do it as much as you can, because it is going to come to an end. We have a lot of people, com there's a lot of people commenting like, oh, well, golf season never shuts down here in South Texas or, uh, or South Florida or California. And sometimes I'm like, God, that's like, oh, I, I wish that could be us. I wish we could golf all year round. Yeah. However, I do not think the addiction would be the same for us if we could golf every single day all year round. Right. Well, it's the whole scratch the itch situation, Correct. right? Correct. So for us, we get to golf all summer long and it's gorgeous. It's beautiful weather. We love it. Right. And then all winter we sit there and we have an itch and it yes. builds and it builds and it builds. And it's just like an actual itch on your body. Yes. The longer you wait to scratch it, the more satisfying it is to finally scratch that itch. And now we get to do that because we wait so long and the itch builds and builds and builds. And then that first round out of the year, it's way more satisfying to yes. scratch it finally yes, and actually be on the course and play real golf again. And it's way more satisfying than just being able to go and golf in Texas, in the desert, in the same course every single week. There is something to Midwest golf in a sense where because we can't have it, we just want it that much more. Mm -hmm. And that first round out in the spring, whether it's April or May or late March, what have you, is always the best round. It ever. also makes golf trips way more cool. 100%. Like, think about going to Arizona on a golf trip if you live in South California. Yeah. It's oh, not that uh, special. It's just different courses 100 miles away. God, yeah. it's just like... A, it's about 10 degrees hotter this weekend than it was last week and then one in California. Yeah, but for us to leave here in January when it's legitimately for the people that live in warm climates that listen to this podcast, it is legitimately negative 30 consistently in January mm -hmm. yeah. here. For us to leave that for a, a hundred degree increase to go golf in Arizona is yeah. unbelievable for us. And that's, I mean, that's why the Midwest is the, literally the best mm -hmm. because you have the you lose the novelty if you're able to golf in that kind of weather daily mm -hmm. throughout the entire year. But we look forward to it that much more because yep. we, we just don't get it. Yep. 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 We have thick skin. To to my point, just highlighting uh Midwest golf. At this point in our golf careers, Ryan, we've been doing the podcast for two, three years. I don't fing remember anymore. Yep. Um, but we've golfed all over the entire country. Yep. Arizona. I've golfed in Myrtle Beach. I've golfed in Montana. I've golfed in Idaho. I've golfed in Missouri. I've golfed Iowa, Wisconsin, whatever, right? Alaska. You. You have golfed in Alaska. I would put the Midwest in fall up against any one of those places. Really? For views. Really? Yes. It was so gorgeous out there. It was the perfect time. Not a single leaf had fallen off the tree, but every single really? one had changed. And we were playing through in and out of lakes, like on the lake shores with 
Every hole was covered in trees. They did a great job manicuring the greens and stuff and the, the fairway. So there wasn't, there were a few holes with a lot of leaves in your way where you could play leaf rule. But for the most part, everything was cleaned up. It was fucking gorgeous. Really? Like I've played golf in on a mountain and it was just as pretty. No shit. So I think we have something unique in that too. Like I would give it to like upstate New York and Maine and that area probably has a similar look, but like... It was way prettier than any course we'd ever played in Arizona. Yep. It was cooler than the courses I played in Myrtle, Myrtle Beach. It was gorgeous out there. So I would give that nod to the Midwest as well. And I've lived here for almost 30 years. And it still was like, I had to stop a couple of times. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. This is fucking cool. And so that's another nod. We get to scratch our itch and it's gorgeous out here, especially in the fall. Yeah. If you get good weather, that's for sure. Because when, when we went out and shot that putter review, the Wilson putter review, uh, it was like 30 degrees and blowing wind. And, and it, it was, was just lightly not, snowing. It was not fun. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, golf is really fun, but weather also plays a big part in it. I don't also, I don't want to call myself a fair weather golfer, but at a certain point I am. Yeah. Um, I'll golf. Give me all of the heat that you want. It doesn't matter for Ooh, me. I'm the opposite. I think. But if you give me the cold, then I can't feel my hands and the feel shots get tougher. And my hand, you know, you know, when your hands get clammy, they get a little wet and they kind of get slippery on the grip that sets in for me. Um, I'd rather take a, I'd rather golf in 120 degree heat Ooh. versus 30 degree fall weather with, let's just say a 20 mile an hour wind. Really? 100 That's degree heat. 120 degree heat, no wind. I would take that over 30 degrees and 20 mile an hour wind. Humid or dry? Dry for sure. Dry. I mean, dry for sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, 120 I'm, humid. You can't even step outside. So I'm the opposite. This last weekend, it was 45 degrees with 40 mile an hour wind. So the feel like was like 36 or something. Oof, and uh, I prefer that to over, over 100 degrees any day. Yeah. Because like I have no problem with layers, like layer me up, I was good to go. See, I and that I think that's where that's what gets me is like I know that the my flexibility and my the movement is going to be restricted by those layers, so I just like can't. I think I'm better when I'm restricted. Well, maybe I mean maybe it like slows things down a little bit, and I I I, I can't remember who I was talking to yesterday. I play better when I'm tight. Because the more I get mm -hmm. loosened up, the harder I want to swing and the more shit goes wrong. Yeah, there's more things that can go wrong when your body can move in more directions. You know how you can like stretch yourself out? Mm -hmm. I wish you could like tighten yourself up. <laughs> you <laughs> can't it up. just drink a shit ton of salt. That is true. And then just but get with, cramps. But yeah, I mean, if you're drinking water too, the salt may, uh, allows you to hold the water better. Uh, yeah, just uh, like do the get the ratio of salt to water really bad. Just drink salt water from the ocean. Or what you need to do is you need to get like a massive leg day in two days before yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you need to get a massive upper body day and the day before around because the, the two day onset of doing legs is f terrible yeah. i almost dropped the f-bomb there didn't though good yeah. um and then the day after upper body pump is is also terrible so yeah you hit a full body workout and then you go tanning to the point where you sunburn yourself. So now your skin's tight too. Well, okay. There I mean there's a happy medium with the tightness here. I actually might try that next year. I might bench uh 305 for 4 and then if I'm feeling it I might deadlift 680 685 for for 4 to 5 reps. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> there you go. Then you'll be feeling real tight. Hell, that's a breakfast ball.